That just means challenger players suck. They do suck. I just saw why you messaged me. Yeah, yeah, Mike. What's up, bro? Mike, can you tell the people in this chat that I'm not toxic? I'm just, uh, I'm just like, uh, I'm just realistic with everything I say, man. I'm like a less version. I'm a less toxic version of Soap. Like Soap will actually ca like call you a fucking idiot as he tells you to not do something. Me, it's just like I just come off with like, you know, like I'm like I, I don't know. I'm trying to be like educational, but at the same time, it's like fuck. This guy's flaming me. Low key. My targeted agent? No, RBC, relax. You RBC, I got... <laughs> I really, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to get uh, some YouTube content for you today. I know, I know it's a struggle. I haven't been streaming the last few days. Let me see, let me see if I can go like 20 and 0 on Riven or some shit, man. But yeah, it, Mike. It was. See, I didn't even mean it in a toxic way. I was just like, look, listen, we're gonna go through the games here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna rank up this Smurf while you watch. I can probably pass your account in like five games, but it's still like good, you know, educational content because you get to see where like you're fucking up or where to kill them. But then that came off as like, yo, you fucking suck. Like, I can pass your elo in like three games, man. This is your garbage. It's like, whoa. I didn't mean it. <laughs> I didn't mean it. I swear. Yo, so I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna show you how good these challenger players are, right? I'm gonna show you, man. <laughs> Shield bash always good to take. It's alright to take here and there. Why no second win versus Volley? Because I'm disrespecting the fuck out of this guy. I'm assuming that this Volley Bear has no concept of laning. He doesn't know how to move, he doesn't know my damage, he doesn't know his damage. He probably doesn't know how he got up from his fucking bed this morning. So I'm just gonna be aggressive and try to like punish him. Now if he actually knows how to play, and actually knows the matchup and knows how to control waves and all that, I'm ultra fucked. Like I just lose this game. But, I mean... What are the chances of that happening? Thirty seconds until minions spawn. What is this? Sword mirrors its owner. <laughs> oh shit. Guys, let me reset, man. I'll stay, fuck it, I don't need a health potion. The fact that you always take Ignite- No, listen, I literally take Ignite in the server. Like, you remember that Tyler 1 game I just played earlier? I take it because it lets me have full control of lane face all the time, and I get to babysit my junglers to make sure that they don't fucking... just drop the whole fucking game for no reason. Why I do it? Ignite actually sucks. I'm not even joking with you guys. I, Ignite actually bad. It's just good against bad players, man. Like 
Mm, kindred sound there. Not bad, not bad, not bad. Really not bad. Mm -hmm. This way is gonna slow push back to me. This Volibird decided he doesn't want to play the game today, so we're chilling. But this is gonna auto push to me, so. Just because of the way that Volibird passive works. Give me content, enough content to make two videos a day? Oh, I don't know about that. I'm gonna let him crash it onto my side. I can't really contest with the wave being that big. You can type of guy who got challenger people bad, and they are bad, man. It's like, it's like going into any rank system or any game, and then it's like, well, you can be a high rank player while also being bad. That's uh, that's the thing. Rank does not determine, like, your rank does not determine that you're actually, like, really, really good at the game compared to, compared to, like, the really high level players, right? I guess that's the thing. You can be high rank while be while not actually being a high rank player. To serve the greater good. Subjective? Of course. If we're, if we're not being, if we're not being subjective, then gold players are fucking amazing. They're top like 15% or 20%, right? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get a wave stack and try to like force crash so I can reset. So close, so close. Hold on. Good shit, good shit. Good shit, good shit. I don't know what the fuck the Kindred's pathing path is, but... Good work. My tripping or is Conquer only useful... Only in really long fights and really late game? No, it's useful all the time. But everyone just takes it for, uh, at least when you're playing Ruin, consistent trading, it's just the best Ruin you can go. Alright, well we get Dragon, Balling's winning, Mint's winning. I need to start just shoving this wave and then just going into the jungle and killing the Kindred. But I'm gonna slow push this because I want to actually get level 6. And then pressure pressure the crash and then kill the Kindred in her jungle. This Volibear is playing way too passive, I can't kill him. Now he's gonna be scared for no reason. Because honestly, even with ult, I can't really kill him. Yeah, short train. Violence to end violence. Mm hmm. What the fuck? Yo, the Kindred just appear on my screen and did disappear? Am I fucking tripping? What the fuck was that? Bro! I almost fucking flashed! The hell was that? <laughs> Yo, this Walla Bear is having the time of his life. We're fucking just farming for 50 minutes. If his team wins, he wins. If his team, if my team wins, I win. Absolutely, just insane. Mm. 
I'm gonna annoy him. Watch this. If he goes this way. Uh, no, okay. Yeah, that's fine. No, your team appears to be doing work. No. Wait. Oh, Varus actually killed this guy. Well done. You actually lived. Unfortunate is that. Enemy killing spree. The fuck is this champ? The champ? The champ is made for people who don't want to play the game. Oh, hello. Am I just dead? Well, it could be worse, man. I could be getting ganked by this kindred on cooldown. Holy fuck, yo, bro, Bonnie, this is a gifted sub, bro. Oh no. We're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. I'll wait for my CDR boots. Yo, where's my Lee Sin this whole game? Yeah, he's chilling. This is a, actually, yeah, example. Example right here, man, where uh, Ignite is amazing, the first, like, Five minutes, but then after, if you don't really get a big lead from it, that's it. TP is just way better. But honestly, most of these games are decided like in the first few minutes, like that with Tyler one game. Because junglers just decide to throw the game right away. Yo, this is Kindred. Loves me, bro. Actually, she enjoys my company. about TP Ignite. Um, it's not very good for Riven because Riven needs Flash to engage in team fights. Let me go mid to sh shadow them. Not like I can play top side and the volleyball doesn't want to play. Nice. Push that so they don't know I'm here. Okay. I don't really care about top side, I care about making sure that my team gets this. Yeah, Volibear, keep pushing that wave up there, man. Let me back up there. He's gonna get some plates, but he's playing Bolivar, so... Only one dragon? Well, it's not only one dragon. We prevent her from getting her mark. Kill the Kindred gives me some gold value back. And the thing about Volibear is that Volibear is a pure early game, like Juggernaut, kind of like Urgot. So the, the longer the game goes on, the, le the less useful he is, so... Him getting an early lead doesn't matter as much. As it would like for me when I'm playing Riven, because I can just go into their backline and potentially kill everyone when I get my items, right? And so is this being? No. Well, it's okay. I got one kill back. More gold. 
Adrian, I thought we were homies. No, you didn't care me that one time. <laughs> the sword mirrors its owner. Okay. So we can just kill this guy. Let's go. Hold him into me. Let's go. Probably do it before he ults. Yo, this champion is actually made for children. You know, I actually think all these bruisers like Urgot and Volibear, all these champions are actually like the Yumis of top lane. Let's go. She's dead, no matter what she tries to do here, right? Oh, you had you still have that. Okay. The good thing about playing those type of champions, like Urgot, uh, Volibear, you know, all those really, really impressive champions are that you, uh, you, you, you actually get to improve your macro a lot, which is really good. But then after you play them for a while, you should transition into playing something that actually gives you carry potential and that has risks to it. There's this one guy I coached that played Urgot, and... Most of this, the I actually ended up like literally refunding part of the the coaching session because it was just literally me telling him play something else. Like there's a reason you're your master with 50% win rate of every like 300 games. Literally like just you need to play something else. It doesn't work. You can't you can't play Urga and those type of champions and expect to have like 60% win rates unless you only specifically pick them for like really good counter picks. So you're gonna end up playing those type of champions for literally thousands of games at a 50% win rate. You might as well be coin flipping. How should I proceed? Was it suited T1? No, it wasn't. It's some guy that uh, did some. Uh, He played. He played for his college team, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. He still. He still played like really well. His micro. His macro was really good. His macro was really, really good. But then it's like you can't hyper carry the games. You can't punish people's mistakes that much when you play those type of champions. Is Gwen good? Oh, Gwen's amazing. She's really, really good. Really strong. She's like an AP Fiora in terms of scaling. Urgot can't carry. Uh, not every game, no. Cause a lot of the picks that you go ag that go against him, outscale him and do better. Urgot can carry in a lot of the games, though. Assuming that to you get to the point where you get to an even skill level and you're playing Urgot, right? And you try to play Urgot into like you know like a pro player, or anyone that actually knows what they're doing, you're gonna literally just go coin flip every game because they're gonna pick stuff like. Let's say even I pick Riven, right? Even even though I pick Riven, it's like still like coin flippy because I still scale pretty well. He scales pretty well, and it becomes more about the team composition and how uh, like our teammates do. If you play uh, Urgot into Jax, for example, oh that's I, don't, I actually don't know if Jax counters him or not. I don't know that matchup, but Urgot into melee matchups is really good because that's actually a counter, so you can actually carry those games because you're always going to be super ahead top side, assuming you know proper wave manipulation and jungle tracking but if you go urgot and they go vladimir and all that other bullshit and they just farm with you you just lose the game or coin flip it really hard it's kind of like the same problem solar has when he plays gp like he's like my perfect example 
you can climb and you will climb. It just takes you an insane amount of games for no reason. That's why I always ask whenever people play those champions, I'm like, are you willing to play this game for an insane amount of time just to, I don't know, like get 600 games so you can actually 50% your way up? If your answer is yes, then hell yeah, go for it. If you're having fun with the champion. I personally can't do that. I can't play something that I know is coin flippy. Kind of like the same reason I don't I don't like playing uh, grapplers in fighting games. I find them to be way too like casino at a high level. I, I I like consistency. I like winning. It also depends on what type of grappler, obviously. But they're, like the well-designed grapplers, the ones that have like a lot of counterplay to them, are really coin flippy. What is this? Oh no, I said they didn't even me. Good shot. So for example, I'd say like... In Street Fighter V, right? Like probably a grappler like that would be like Zangief. If you think about like Lara and all these other characters, it's... They're grapplers, but they're like not standard grapplers, right? They have like other tools that makes them like more consistent. I like consistencies as a League of Legends player, yeah, but as a League of Legends player, when I do unrank to challenger accounts, there's a reason I get 90% win rates with them, and it's because of that consistency. I don't like randomness. The thing is, consistency in League of Legends is, at least if you play a champion really optimally, is uh, at most like 60% win rate, so you're still going to lose 40% of your games regardless. Okay, well, we get dragon, so I'm gonna push this out and then rotate to them. But you can get 100% with god tier luck. Uh, the best I did, the best I did was 90% uh, win rate to challenger. Well, I, no, actually, I think it was 89%. 87. No, no, it was. I think it was 90. I think it only started going down when I was in challenger. Then you have 94. It was 94% and Master Grandmaster. Did you duo? No, no duo. Just solo queue only. And that's good. Victory. That's a game. You think I need to play it because there's 10 masses out there with Shamper? No, I don't think that's it. Because for individual players, the region results don't necessarily matter as much when it comes to like self-improvement more like uh more like a journey for each player right and they have like their own thing going i'm actually curious i haven't checked i haven't checked solar because it'll be the gg in a while this solar Baka. i think i think he was doing well last time i checked yo let's go 54% win rate. He's in the he's in the upswing. He's winning. He's winning. He's winning. He's climbing up. He's climbing up. 842 OP, 52%. Sure. I'm expecting a downswing soon though. I think he's gonna lose like his next like seven games in a row.
Do you know his Johnny? Yeah, the the other GP man. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know, I know. Don't speak it into existence. Hey man, it's just stats. It's just stats. Uh, 